I think I established this outpost some time ago. I, I don't even remember how long I've been here now. Hmm. How, how peculiar. I can't even say how much time has passed. That seems to me a sign to leave. Oh, I have my tools still. That's good. Hmm. How strange. Hello, Birdo friends. <laughs> You're so cute. Interesting little jungle outpost. There even appears to be a bamboo farm. I think. I think we have to travel through the nether. Oh my. Truly a desolate place. Oh, I remember all of this now. It's coming back to me. Oh! I should introduce myself, I suppose. My name is Isakov. Oh, well. That was the name of my former leader. It's a long story, you see. Perhaps I'll find the time to tell you. But I typically just go by Isakov now in memory of... of a world left behind, essentially. But in this strange world that we've uh, found ourselves in, I've had time to establish uh, quite a bit of infrastructure. It takes us all the way to the end portal, many, many hundreds of blocks away. Of course, this takes us down to the nether roof, or the, the nether uh, interior, rather. Oh yes, I remember this place. The lighthouse. I think this is our portal. <gasps> oh my! Hello sir, welcome to the overworld. It's quite smelly, let's leave him alone. Oh my, this place is fascinating. Oh, and we have a friend. Huh? What do you offer for trade, sir? Oh my, emeralds for flowers and rooted dirt. I, I want some of those flowers. Ah. You stay right there. Oh, wow, yes. I, re I, remember, I remember this place, of course, of course. It hasn't been that long, actually. Or has it? I hope this place is not entirely in ruins. Hmm. Huh. Yes, thank you for the flowers, good sir. And the huh. cyan dye, I think I'll take that as well. And the rooted huh. dirt, why? Oh my. And there's actually something else I'd like for me. Ow. should leave them be. I was going to take the leads, but I, I think I have enough, actually. Okay, we'll just return those. Mm -hmm. we'll just return our items to the correct areas. I think I have a die section here. 
just throw that up there. Let's return this glass bottle. And let's return some of these potions. I don't think I'll be needing them for the time being. These flowers though, I think we should go around and, and plant them around the island. And and today I, I want to take you on a tour of the island. This place that has become home for the, the remnants of uh, our people. This is Bungshot Island, of course, that I speak of, and I can show you a map of it. Though it's not completely up to date, this is a rough uh, outlook of the area. <clears throat> we are currently right here at the lighthouse, of course, and the southern areas belong to Lord Sunder. Uh, Lord Sunder lives down here on this island that is uh, loosely connected to the areas, uh, the rest of Boomshot Island, of course. We have a, a very aquatic uh, terrain here. There are rivers that cut through most of the island and large lakes and ponds. Uh, to the east, the southeast, we have, of course, uh, the Lord of the Skies. It's a great mansion there that he resides in. Uh, and in the center of the island, we have a keep that is currently uh, being lived in by a band of villagers that we rescued from the northern continent. Uh, so they are living in the keep that we constructed for them. Uh, and of course, on the coast, we have the melon farm, which you can see up there. Uh, we have a fisherman village as well that settled there from the northern continent. Uh, we also have an iron producing facility. Uh, and a trading ship that just showed up recently. We have uh, a sort of redstone farm, and we also have a large tree farm, and of course we have a boardwalk, and in the middle of the island, on the lower terrain, we have the campsite that uh, was traditionally founded when we first settled this area, but it has grown uh, quite a bit since then. Uh, and we also have various bits of infrastructure buildings and farms around the place as well, which I will surely show you. This is my basement. I have a small cooking area up here, of course, and flowers and, and, and things. I have a little chimney here. And nice smell of things. I, this is my primary sleeping bed when I'm on this side of the island. And we have defeated... El Dragon in this world, so I have sheared his head, of course, and mounted it on my wall, so when I sleep, I think of our victory in the end dimension. <clears throat> of course, we have defeated the Wither as well, and we have defeated the great Cod King. Uh, the King of the Cod is dead, of course, so his head is mounted on the wall as well. Um, I do have my armor, which I will leave off for the time. I don't plan on combat for the moment, so I, I, I don't think we need it. Of course, we've defeated the nether, the nether beasts, of course, the, the piglins, the hoglins, the hoglins, the boglins, and so on. Uh, and in this way, out here to the right, this is the main harbor. Of course, we have the VIP section over here, which also takes us to a path that leads down the southern coast to the apiary and the other direction it takes us into the underground harbor here and I have a little mine set up down here it's not running at the moment but we can fix that I also have a little bit of uh, horticulture that I do I, I do like to garden so all I have to do is flick this lever and then give it a good old whack Whoop! And off it goes, <laughs> collecting materials, such and forth. Of course, I also have a uh, a villager that has uh, come to assist me in this underground facility. It's the high prelon of trade, Odysseus, and he he gives me mending books, which is useful. And I also have storage supplies and. Of course, a mask from a uh, wandering trader. And this is my my little uh, uh, terrarium, I suppose you could call it, for my 
pet. <laughs> Oxalotls? Where are they? Where's Sunny Day Friendo? This is Sunny Day Friendo. He's very cute. I made this little area for them. I might expand it. That could be a project for us one day. I have many such projects that I would like to work with you on. And each day, my goal is to pick something small to do together and enjoy the relaxing atmosphere of the game. And also, see what we can further construct on this island. Of course, I've spent many hours developing it and making the infrastructure and pathways beautiful. But I would like to take a step back and really immerse myself in this place and, and see what kind of beauty we can draw forth. Uh, and if you'd like to join me on that, we can uh, have some relaxing uh, sounds and uh, atmospheres to enjoy together. That's basically the goal of these dreams. So, today, of course, I just want to continue to give you a tour and show you around the island to get you familiar with everything. And we may spend a little time working on some things. But I do like to restock and replan things as we go around, so we may spend some time doing that. Oh, and of course, we, we should go to sleep. Ah, much better. Well, you've seen this way. This is out front to the net portal, that's where we came in from. So come in here. This is technically still the basement uh, level of the lighthouse. Uh, this is our chain armor hall, of course. Uh, I've collected many suits of chain uh, mail from our skeleton farm. And I have this enchanting room in here. And then as you come up here, I have a bit of a, a greenhouse, which is very nice and uh, just a lovely place to relax for the evening, have a cup of tea. Of course, this way we have the bottom floor of the lighthouse. And I also like to document gifts from friends. So this is uh, lava from Lord Sunder's uh, lava farm. Get on down to Sunday's lava farm. Down there, or yonder next to that there tree farm. Open whenever, get you some. Sunday is a great guy. Uh, and he's also Lord of the South. So, very important person in these parts. Though him and the Lord of the Skies have been missing for some time, I'm sure we will see them. I have uh, heads collected from them, of course. Uh, Lord Sunder was asking for some supplies at one time, and I told him, sure, but you must bring me the head of the Lord of the Skies in payment. And of course, they both brought me each other's heads, and everyone benefited. But this is the lighthouse, I won't take you all the way up for now. Perhaps eventually. I have my personal study up there, but I'll keep the contents private for the moment. And if we come down this way, eventually we'll get to the original campsite. We also have the Skinwalker Ranch and Lord Sunder's fiefdom down that way to the south. But if we continue this way, cross the bridge, we come to the main campsite. This area is just a, a beginning area where we were first uh, founding this, this land. We needed food, we needed access to the river, we needed basic shelter and security. And this is ultimately what we created. This wheat has been fully grown for many, uh, many, many days now. I, I pretty much have decided just to, to leave it. We have as much wheat as we need from our redstone farms, but basically, so no need in manual farming. But this is our original campsite, and of course we have our log here, which uh, gives an update to every stage of the island's development. Perhaps we'll spend an entire episode or a moment together just reading through this log at some point, if you'd like to stop and... Uh, check out the pages you can, but for now, we will we'll just leave it at the beginning of the most recent entry, Entry 4. I think now we will cross the river again to the north, and head into the northern district. 
So now you can see the river cuts through the entire island on this on this side. But if we head up this way, we come to the King's Log Shop. And the King's Log Shop sells logs for one diamond a stack. Uh, I manage it, and I have not sold any diamonds or any logs. I have uh, been slowly collecting saplings and building up extra storage, but I do not have that much stock quite yet. So we will probably spend uh, a few afternoons or so together just chopping down trees. I find it to be very meditative. But for now, we'll carry on. As we move back this way towards the lighthouse, you see that we kind of have paths running parallel through many parts of the island. One thing I, I care about in my city or or island design is just making sure that there are many pathways to choose from and that wherever you're going it feels accessible. Um, and I try and do that with slabs and, and guiding fence posts and signs, all sorts of, of things. Now of course that's something that I would like to develop even further and perhaps introduce some sort of universal pathing system that the, an entire island follows and easily tells you how to get around. This is my automatic collecting uh, quad farms. <laughs> it's a, a very simple design uh, I came up with. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's a, it's a simple way to collect crops. And then all you have to do is get out two stacks of 56 potatoes or whatever crop you're, you're seed or using, and you just replant. And just to show you how it works, you flick the lever, the water pushes it into the canals, the lever again, and the water stops. It's very simple, There's these pistons push up sand, holding the water back, and the pistons drop, the sand detracts, and the water flows and flushes all the items out. We'll go ahead and replant this. It's rather simple. One stack of 60, uh, 56, there we go, two stacks. And occasionally they do get swept up on the edges, but as I replant, I just pick them up and I see how many extra I got, and then I just give them a little shock. I'd like to plant some of these around here as well. I think this purple would look very nice in the area. There's roses that look nice, but that purple is a very good color. Well, let's continue onward. I do like this area. It's very pretty. And as we continue, oh, I hear an enemy. I was not prepared for combat. Oh, it seems to be underground, perhaps. Perhaps that's concerning. Well, I'm gonna leave a flower here to mark that. Maybe I'll remember to check later. But you will see this is the uh, northern coast and this is our iron producing facility. It used to be very ugly, <laughs> a naked infrastructure here of machinery and whatnot. But I've, uh, I've made it a little more beautiful with this uh, large fortress-like structure. And this is just a very simple iron farm. We have quite a bit of iron supplies. The deaths of the golems fill the air constantly. <laughs> Often you hear nothing but their screams when you're in this area. And the cries of the terrified villagers, of course. It is a ghastly machine, I admit. I've done my best to keep the fortress a bit menacing in that regard. Of course, I would like to say, first of all, that I did not go out of my way to build this iron farm. I actually was of the mind to keep iron a uh, more of a restricted resource. However, I, whoop, whoops, 
I was contacted by uh, Lord Sunder, uh, and he insisted that I construct uh, this monstrosity. So you have Lord Sunder to thank for the construction of this iron farm. He is the one who actually uh, contracted it. And that is uh, something that uh, you folks should pay attention to when you're when you're thinking about oh why why was this building or why was this this odd installation or, or something constructed it, it seems so nonsensical you may be onto something you know just do a little digging see see who's funding this and, and for what reason that's all I'm saying Lord Lord Sunder is uh, is the one in this case who is uh, responsible for this he is the patron of this farm. Uh, and our iron supplies are all benefited for. We basically have as infinite iron as we need. Uh, but I will say, I, I do not feel guilty for this. Hello, chicken. And this is, of course, a beautiful trading ship that just showed up on the northern coast. It is uh, it's quite beautiful, uh, and it is it's just totally changed the skyline out here. I am truly captivated by it. And of course, we can we can walk around, and I think there's a sailor within as well. I it, it showed up only a few weeks ago. This ship, and there's only one only one sailor on board. I I truly hope that uh, none were lost in travels, but also I I I failed to imagine how one sailor could could manage a vessel of this size. They even have a ship cat. Oh, how pretty. So let's, let's go inside. Oh wow, this is a nice cabin area. A little cramped, but you know, there's a ship. Space is very economical. Oh, this area is quite, quite nice and spacious. Oh, and here's our, our sailor face trying to get some sleep. How about you let me sleep instead? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take a nap later. Oh my. This is a nice cabin area. And this area is wow, rather pretty indeed. The ship is, is capable of producing uh, a lot of material. And there's even a hold underneath here I think I can kind of see down into. Even farming areas? Wow. Oh, this seems to be the lower hold. I'm a bit scared to go down there. Yes, I'm not exactly sure the purpose of this ship, but it's a big addition to the coast. I'll just continue along my little tour here. <clears throat> out this way past the iron farm I think I'll take you all the way south now to Lord Sunder's realm Ooh, the road needs a bit of maintenance here I'm not sure what happened probably a, a creeper blast this is of course uh, the boulevard that I constructed some time ago I was doing a bit of city planning and of course, we had the wood farm over here. And I have a big uh, plan for development this way, which will be a, a boardwalk on the beach. I'm very excited to work on that with you. We'll probably spend some time doing that together. I've actually cleared the area for it already. So if you can kind of imagine rows of tall sort of structures and piers jutting out and lots of color and and, and beautiful docks and perhaps little sailboats in the bay. Yes, I, I have many plans. This area has taken quite a beating through terraforming and creep blast, though I will say. Some parts of the island have been neglected in this regard. Urban, in, urban industrialization and uh, urban design is a slow process, I'm afraid. And it's, you can only do one little bit of land at a time I found. That is my goal, to slowly refine the the terrain of the island. I want everything to be so so pretty and, and idyllic that y you wouldn't mind stopping and just staring at any one spot. If any one spot is, is that beautiful, you know, I think I, I've done something well. 
by looking down into the river here. I love this river canyon. Which is a man-made structure, I will admit. <laughs> but it's beautiful, certainly. So now we're getting closer to Lord Sunders realm. This uh, area is the old is the lava farm that Sunder created. I read the, the book about earlier. This little pit is where I've been digging up obsidian as required. Uh, right now, it's just extra obsidian that wasn't needed in the last batch. So these troughs are just mostly empty. But this is where you'd put the lava, and then as you break the the water, it just gives you obsidian. Now this lava farm is very efficient. We'll go ahead and do Lord Sunder a favor and bomb it for him. It's almost completely full. However, I do know that he is planning on moving this farm to the, the keep. So we'll not remain here forever. Oh, and it's actually too full. Well, we'll just keep these for ourselves then. Now this is Skinwalker Ranch, of course. This ranch has been moved multiple times. It was originally in the spot where the wood farm resides. However, uh, that area was cleared for development and the herd was moved across the river all the way south to this area, which was empty before, as it lies on the other side of the hill that our camp uh, sits across. So our campsite is right over there originally. And then this area was the uh, when we settled, was the uh, very beginning campsite. Which I can take you into real quick. This is the very first cave that we settled the first night we came to this settlement. The very first night we settled in this cave, we had rations, two steak, two chops, and one chicken each. That was the extent of our... Of our <laughs> oh my, the extent of our, our supplies. Which is very a very dire time. However, now it opens up into this underground canal, which this entrance it needs a little work. This cave could use some updating. However, I was thinking about leaving it as an archaeological remain. However, now when you come out the front, this also needs some work. I, I must admit, some like I said, m m much of the island needs refinement and uh, other bit of uh, you know a little bit of care and design to make it a little uh, prettier with some of the things we've moved around the place. However, I think the ranch really fits this area, and it's quite beautiful. It gives you a nice view of the keep, of a, of a strange object we found up there, and this lovely structure as well that I constructed for the Fletchers. And this is the farm that Lord Sunder has been working on, which the roof is just now finished, so I'm sure he will he'll finish the interior of this eventually as well. We may spend some time working here as well, breeding animals and taking care of them. It is a rather time-consuming task when you need to produce animal resources, so we can do that together. But those are the kind of tasks I would like to do, little small things. Before we go to Lord Sunder's realm, I would like to take a detour and run back to the west, or the east rather, and show you the mill and the apiary, which lie just south the lighthouse. This little path, path runs along the beach and it leads to the sawmill. Old Sunder and I constructed this together and I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. As you come inside you have this large water uh, kind of thing drawing up water and this takes you to the larger mill for the saw. We have, of course, our giant wheel and rotor. And it's just a very cozy sort of uh, industrial place. And here is of, uh, <laughs> is Bear the Boss, of course. He is the overseer of work here. And I really just love the feel of this place. It's very uh, industrial and feels alive. And, you know, that can be a difficult thing to kind of uh, accomplish completely. Just uh, sitting in this place, I, I do feel 
do feel like I'm in a place of work and, 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 uh, and progress. And of course, Lord Sunder and I had to had to dam up the the, the ocean here. This used to be a, a path of travel for our boats. We are coming to visit each other, but now, of course, you have to sail around the mill, which is another reason the river was constructed. And this is the lighthouse harbor. Just get a good look up from here, and the the, the path I was showing you much earlier on. And this is a good look down the uh, the river valley that cuts through the whole island which I can probably take you on when we, when we go to see it Lord Sunder I also just constructed this the other day which is a little landing dock for the apiary here I want the whole island to eventually be very accessible by boat this is a, uh, a report update of a pillager raid we try and log all these contacts successfully so I have some apiary rules here, and the overseer here is my pet bird. And of course I have a protective suit from the bees. I don't want to be exposed to them. We can probably collect some honey. Really quickly. There's a little bit. Can make some candles with that. I have I plan to eventually spend some time with you very soon in the apiary, perhaps the next time we meet. And we're just going to farm honey and work with the bees and take care of them. But now let's visit Lord Sunder's realm and the Lord of the Skies mansion, and that will probably be enough to wrap up for today. But before we do that, I would like to grab a music disc to play a little bit. Pretty sure I just left it in here. Oh. Actually, oh no, it is it's in the keep. Well, we will I still have to show you the keep too, so I will grab it from there in just a little bit. But first, let's go visit Lord Sunder, and then we'll visit and uh, and we'll see the keep after, and we'll finish there. That sounds like a perfect way to conclude things, conclude our, our first uh, dream together. So as you can see, I, I dug out this entire area to make uh, my base a little bit more accessible to the river. There's also another entryway right there which also cuts through to the ocean on the other side also there are a few sunken boats it is a bit treacherous however I do enjoy this travel it is very very charming And this is Lord Sunder's realm. Oh my, and it's currently under siege by the undead. What a ghastly sight. I should try and sleep before any other ghastly creatures come out. We'll just spend the night here. I think he has a guest room here. We'll just kick out his servant from bed. He's got a music box room here, and this is his little home, which I have to say is quite charming. It's got a great view of the island and the keep. On the south here, he lives right by the ocean. Not to be too snoopy, but I do love the design of his little bedroom here. He also has some storage upstairs. He's got to look down here into his little terrarium. He's got a little axolotl area here and palm plants that have been here since the beginning of the world. 
And this also gives us a great view of the Lord of the Skies mansion. Which is quite beautiful on the water, I must admit. And just past that, you can even see the melon farm. This workshop area outdoors, though, is very beautiful. This was a box that I left for the Lord of uh, Lord Sunder. And it was just some potion supplies that uh, I returned to him that he had, he had lent me initially. He also has an outdoor coop. Very nice area. And of course, access to the nether, as well as a dock. And Lord Sunder takes his forestry very seriously. So he has this back area here connecting to the islands that span all the way to the mill. And this is what he uses for forestry and uh, wood collecting. However, we also, we also have the wood farm now, so wood collection has become much, much easier on the island. And uh, now I will take you briefly to the coast before we return to the keep. I want to give you a better look of a, of a little of the sky's house. This mansion is truly a sight. Built on this pier are these uh, these stilts. It has quite a presence. Oh, and he even has a uh, a nether portal underwater here. That's fascinating. Yes, let's see if we can just take a quick tour. It doesn't have uh, too much furniture or interior, but it is uh, quite lovely and spacious, I must admit. And this is actually a gift that I don't think he's seen yet, but Lord Sunder and I made a uh, trip to the end uh, and defeated some ender cities, and that's something else we could do together. But when we did this, uh, we also brought uh, the Lord of the Skies, some loot as well for him whenever he returns. We try to take care of each other on the island, so hopefully he sees that and uh, he enjoys it. Yes, yeah, so he has a, a lovely home here. Quite beautiful, and I, I can't wait to see him uh, move into it a bit more. And now we will just keep going up the coast here. There's not too, too much over here, except for the melon farm and uh, fisherman settlement. And Lord Sunder also created a creeper farm. Oh, and this is a, a pacified uh, villager <laughs> that I baited into breaking his crossbow. And now his punishment is to sit in this boat forever. <laughs> This is the melon farm. I have spent a lot of time out here and I plan to spend much more time with you as well. Farming melons. I have a lot of melons. These are all gathered by hand. I am planning on gathering many more. Of course, I also have a beacon over here. And a decent amount of potatoes planted in this area. You follow me this way. This is the entrance to our fishermen. For our villager settlement, and of course these have been <laughs> reduced to their lowest trades, so we, we produce emeralds of all kinds from them, and food, and these are one of the backbones of industry here on Boopshot Island. So these are a great resource, and I, planned on, uh, I plan on spending uh, a lot of time with you here, just relaxing, and and uh, enjoying the melon farming, and uh, enjoying our villages, and uh, the atmosphere they provide. That is really what I want to do in this world, as I said earlier, is just relax, and uh, enjoy this space together. This episode has been very talking heavy, uh, I will admit, they will not be so talking heavy in the future. I just wanted to explain a little bit of our, of our lore and history here, and uh, and I'll leave you perhaps a little bit excited for the possibilities of what we can uh, do together. I, I, I would love to build new uh, constructions and things as well. And we can also do uh, building sessions for that. Uh, and, and other things besides just farming, uh, the farms that we already have. You know, we might spend uh, half an hour together and, you know, just work in the apiary. I think that would be a really wonderful uh, way to spend time.
uh, it'd be really fun. Or, you know, we could we could work on something new together and then even use it. And that would also be really fun. But it'll basically just be, you know, long kind of uh, relaxing atmospheric uh, sections, just enjoying the audio of the, of, of, uh, of the world and everything around us. And, you know, uh, me narrating a little bit of, of our plans and, uh, you know, what we're going to do moving, moving forward. So this is the, the central keep. This has been one of the biggest projects Lord Sunder and uh, the Lord of the Skies and I have, have worked on together. Um, I set up a planning and development office, which I'll take you to. But before we get there, we're going to pass through most of the area. We have our, our stone masons here for all sorts of clay and other things we need. We have a few farmers, and we have this building for our Fletchers. I really love how it turned out. I think it's it's beautiful and cozy, and I just I love hanging out in here with them. It gives us a great overview of the lighthouse, the mill, and the rest of the world. I also have a small basement that I plan on doing something with, so this is probably something we can also spend time doing together. Designing a small interior, because it can take quite some time, so it would be a relaxing way to spend an hour or so. I have many plans like that. And up here, we have the, the bedroom for the Fletchers, and this poor iron golem has been stuck here for as long as he spawned in <laughs> many months ago. Or it wasn't too long, but he's been here forever, and I don't think he's ever going to leave. <laughs> I will keep you updated, of course, on the state of our Iron Golem friend. Poor guy. So, we just let the villagers roam free because we want them to be happy, basically. We want to give them a good life here. They moved all the way from their continent, uh, their own continent to the north, and we want them to be happy and safe on the island. So, we let them be free and work or relax or do as they choose with us. This is the log office, the forestry office that Lord Sundas established. But I think the interior is mostly empty at the moment. And of course, if we cross the small river up here, it takes us to the upper section of the keep, which takes us to the library, which is still in construction. However, the first floor design gives you a bit of a uh, have an idea of what it'll look like when it's finished. And uh, well then we just have a couple librarians. Now this area is blocked off because it's still under development and I don't want them wandering around because uh, this area isn't quite designed for their safety yet. So I'm gonna have to uh, come back and make it a bit more safer before they can roam freely. However that is the goal of this area. And once we come up here, oh wait, I just have to show you Lord of, the Lord of the Skies building. So he built this for uh, this little tower, or some sort of villages. So we also need to move uh, a few of them in here. And it's quite spacious. So we can definitely have them on the bottom floor here. Perhaps some sort of uh, stock market traders or something. I don't know if the villagers have that trade, but some professionals. This area is financially growing, so we need someone to account for it, I suppose. Up here we have the Island Market and Public Works District Division, Bungshard Island Civil Engineers Headquarters. Please wait to be seen by a BSA CA rep. This is our storage area for all of our civil works up here. And if you come around the back, we have our office. And unfortunately this seat is a bit <laughs> under maintenance, but when we have meetings we can come in here and we can uh, all talk to each other. I should probably return this armor eventually. And this is where we conduct our meetings of city business. And I also have a small map of the entire island. Bungshot Island. And as the sun sets, I've shown you pretty much the entire island. Of course, there are a few things we've missed. We haven't seen every nook and cranny. However, I just wanted to give you a general idea of the feel of this world and how I like to work in it. And 
you know, set the tone for what we're going to be doing together and you know what kind of little projects and activities I have in mind. Because I have a lot of relaxing ideas and I just want to relax and spend a little time every day or so together and just take it easy and use this as a bit of uh, a bit of mindful relaxation or, or break time. I think just to end the episode, we are going to listen to a little bit of a, uh, a C14 disc. How about that? How the, the Lena Rain uh, new music is, is quite good as well. Well, that's going to be it for me today. If you last this far, I really hope you enjoyed everything. And, and uh, I, I realize this, this format may be a bit odd. However, I just want things to be very relaxing. And in the future, it'll be less talking. It'll be more gameplay and, and more relaxing sounds. However, we may do some talking sections in between. Or if you have any questions or would like to hear any stories, I would absolutely love to tell some stories. Or if you would have less voice, that's fine too. Let me know what you think about this. And I look forward to seeing you again. In Isaac of Streams. Thank you for joining me for this tour of Boomshot Island. And I hope you have a wonderful evening, or day, or afternoon, or morning. Wherever you may be. Farewell.